Okay, this is the first in a series of clips um, that where I'll be going over different parts of the Balanced Scorecard project. The Balanced Scorecard project is, is um, a major part of, of your grade in this managerial accounting class, and there's a handout for you to download on, with the Balanced Scorecard project. Now, what I'm assuming when you start looking at this is that you have uh, read the readings and looked at the recommended uh, clips already that really tell you about the balance scorecard. This is just going to be describing the project. And you'll find all of this information in the project directions, or most all of it, but um, some of you may be a little more of a visual learner. I've noticed some people don't actually read everything that you give them to read, and there are some parts of this that are very important. And so I wanted to take a little bit of time to go over that. Now, in the readings, and again, in the other clips that I hope that you have watched or looked at, we learn that there's four perspectives to the balanced scorecard. It's developing a balanced set of performance measures. And the perspectives, um, and again, I'm not going to go over these uh, in terms of you know, describing them in detail, because you should already know a little bit about them. But there's the financial perspective. That's what we're used to measuring. That's been our very traditional performance measurement. You know, how did this affect the bottom line? <clears throat> did I increase my uh, profits from uh, this? Okay, but also with the balanced scorecard, we get three others. We get learning and growth, customer, and uh, internal business process. So for the project, uh, you are going to be um, applying um, the balanced scorecard concepts to your individual job um, and looking for one, at least one measure for each one of these perspectives. And there, there's actually seven parts um, once you've identified um, what you're going to do with the perspective. The first is just the objective, which is the goal. You know, what am I trying, uh, what, what's my goal? What am I trying to accomplish here? And once you've determined that, um, then you're going to look at how you're going to measure that. This is going to be a measure of the performance. Um, the target that you come up with needs to be very specific. So it kind of quantifies whatever your measure is. And I do have a specific example that I'll be going over in our uh, student example in uh, my next um, segment of this uh, topic. Um, and then um, when you look at the logic of the underlying measure, you know, why did you pick this? What was the logic behind picking that? The source of the information, where, where are you going to get this information from to quantify this? Now, here's where we get to something that, that may be interesting. I've, I've looked at literally hundreds of uh, student projects like this and balance scorecards and some people will take this and try to fit it into the confines of their job. They'll try to see if they can find something uh, that they're already doing that fits into each one of these perspectives. But the people that tend to have the, the best projects are those that have tried to design their ideal balance scorecard. What would be the most ideal thing for you to measure for each one of these perspectives? And so when we get down to the source of the information, whatever you've come up with as your ideal measure may not be something that you're already tracking. And that's OK, because this is just uh, this is a hypothetical project which you may or may not implement. So for instance, I'm just going to give you an example. If your customer, for your customer perspective, you were trying to get customer feedback. And we're all customers somewhere. So we're, we're all the time being asked to provide feedback. We call places on the phone, and they want us to fill out a survey. We go somewhere, you have your car serviced. Everywhere it seems like wants us, is, is looking for, for our perspective as a customer. So if customer surveys, uh, doing a customer survey to find your customer satisfaction is not something you're currently doing or measuring, um, you can still write about it for your project. It could be something that you think they should do or uh, would fit the requirements of the project. So it doesn't have to be. But where will the source of this information come from? So if it was customer surveys, that would be what you'd be pitting as the source. Um, and then you look at the next um, piece 
is the frequency that information is reported or will be reported if it's not already. And then the last is the relationship uh, to the firm's goals or objectives. And I've had a lot of people that tell me, oh, you know, I work in a cost center. You know, I don't think I can really do this. But actually, if you work in a cost center, your customers may be internal customers. So again, for that customer perspective, you could be getting um, internal or external customers. And on, uh, in a few times, most find most of my students work, but sometimes there's a student that's not currently working, and they generally choose to design a scorecard based on perhaps their last job, because they can they still remember a lot of things about their last position and how they would structure such a project as this. Um, And so that's just a little piece of the four perspectives. Again, there's four perspectives and seven parts, seven different things I'm looking for for each one of those um, measures. And in the next segment, we'll be looking at a student's project and their scorecard. And um, so I hope this, is, this helps you to understand a little bit more um, as you begin to study more and apply it to your own position.